Good morning. Uh, you outside again in this, uh, as you see, cluttered shop. I have my uh, one of my um, my furry headstocks here. I have been scraping bearings, that is front bearings, the last week or so. They are all in a little bit different shape. Uh, actually, now I have uh, I'm, I'm through this already, but uh, and I found out that some of them were okay. Uh, as a disclaimer, I can't tell you that I'm a professional because I am not, but I'm now I'm becoming a somewhat more skilled amateur, uh, and I want to show you uh, how I did this because I think there is a learning process in there, and there is also something to be to be uh, derived from seeing the results and uh, also the how I accomplished this and uh, uh, also the, uh, the theory behind this at least to my uh, to the extent I've learned it or been um, been told and read and the tools of the trade so to speak bearing scrapers blue rub it onto a master, in this case the spindle itself. I've also refurbished the spindles of course. Uh, that was primarily just uh, cleaning them up and, um, and buffing them. They go into the bearing and are used as masters for the scraping. The goal is, of course, here now to uh, to get this, uh, this, the texture, uh, so to speak, the um, surface finish needed to oil the spindle while it's uh, rotating, and provide a stiff bearing so that you you have a perfect alignment and accuracy while turning. This is a bearing from one of the older ones, so even from this base portion on the, well, it's like this from the bottom. So you have a, a bearing that is already divided into segments, three segments, three different oil supplies. Well, on the latter headstocks they reverted to just having one oil supply from the bottom well not entirely accurate this is also one of the older ones with the oil supply from the top but on this one there is only one call it oil supply there or from the rear there are, are no more uh, longitudinal lines or cut out, cutouts but there is one two and three holes for the oil to enter to different designs while on the one of the newer models you see the longitudinal feed also being a little asymmetrical from the or it's some degrees off to the to the side to line up with the with the wick it's coming in here but there is a, this is the only uh, feed line in and it is on these <coughs> that I, as I mentioned, I would try to <coughs> make a relief. So I have four pads. Not really certain if I can make it, but uh, then this would mean that I have a relief area down here. Just uh, drawing on the outside. But of course this will be relief in here. And then over here. Over here and over here. I 
would say on the older tails uh, headstocks then they make it like um, with this or these three like they have a leaf like so so and so that means that you scrape harder in this area here so that the the resting or the the bearing will actually be in pads like this since it is hard to see what you're or to show what I'm how I'm scraping inside the bearing on the mifer now I've taken the liberty to just sew up a piece of suitable it's quite soft metal here and then <coughs> show how I'm trying to scrape the bearing so I'm trying to make lines or marks just like for normal scraping but I'm going inside and out in lines that's just my personal preference you see the point and the rotating as I go and then I'll try to make this continuous thereby high spot here a continuous high spot here and um, then as uh, mentioned I will scrape or since the oil supply from if you look down in the bearing is like this it enters through the wick here and then feeds not to the end but like this I'm going to make this as a low so scrape this a little bit harder this area here and then i'm going to also make a relief area over here and here four places at least try that makes it effectively into pads so that we have a scraped area like there and like there And then four of these relief areas making it into a multi facet or multi plane bearing multi contact bearing if at all i'm able to do so but that's that's the goal and then as i said also contact at the ends And this jig I made, uh, I think it was quite okay. Just uh, being able to to tilt it around like that, different angles, and then using the the bearings, uh, pair of throwaway bearings as uh, guidance. I think that was also okay quite easily at least on most I'm not saying it was like this on, on all but on most it was just a matter of undoing the bearings quite easily like this and then of course unscrewing simple matter Actually, two two scrapers. I think this is called a spoon scraper, which I also use. A little bit longer handle, and this one 
mean the difference between these two scrapers uh, I would say is uh, that this can be set up with the correct angle on the sides here like this one is now five degrees negative so that would be if I push it like that down not like up but down like that so it rests on the the rear of the the trailing edge it will be five degrees negative so if i rest it flat the edges will be five degrees negative the, this direction of course you have the the curvature which is not so easy to do something about unless you have several and this one i have tried first of all I'll lengthen the handle uh, but i tried to um, also to, to make it a little bit curved like so uh, but I can't do anything about the, the edges here so the, these will be at a certain angle and with a when I scoop these are at a much more positive cutting edge than this one so this will scrape I think in my eyes at least better so I just rest it here and then I go back and forth to get the angle and then on the other machine the flat of course I have to go the other way to get the other side alternative to that would be to use a normal stone and just go back and forth like this I haven't made an attempt to do this because I think this is inferior to the uh, more rigid and accurate way of since I have a machine and then I only use, I could use canoe, but in this case I found a little bit, this is an oil-based marking compound. And then I have my spindle, which actually resembles the one in, in uh, Nick Miller's videos, because that's a, uh, a Myford grinder, and this is a Myford lathe, Myford lathe. So I think it's actually just a more beefed up version of this one, as already in use in the, um, in the grinder. Actually, I suspect that it could be the same as they used in the what they call the big bore version of this one. <laughs> 